Hi everyone, looking forward to seeing lots of you for the February 2023 British Shooting Show, 17th to the 19th. And don't forget this year, stocks uh, permitting, we all get a free show guide included in our ticket price and you get free car parking within your ticket price as well this year. See you all there. Hi there everyone, Russ Douglas 222. I really hope you can hear me over the sounds of the distant dual carriageway and there's a, a light plane going overhead. First and foremost, thank you to Ian Blackwood of Blackwood Outdoors for lending Bruce and myself the excellent Hike Micro Alpex. It's A50T, so it's A50 and it comes with a clip-on 850 nanometer IR illuminator for night use. The TN is the 940 nanometer version, so there is a covert version available. The other scope on the Brucey bonus mount is one of my two hard 008S LRFs, and I'm about to take a slight risk. You're not supposed to take the, the side cap off if there's a chance of moisture getting in, and oh, that's a big cloud just coming overhead. So I'm gonna put it back on for a second. I can feel spots of rain on my face every now and then, and I really don't want to sort of condemn my uh, one of my two pads just so I can record some audio. The Alpex has audio visual recording and there's a tiny little hole here on the back of the Alpex beside the three main controls. I must remember the camera's over here. Yep, don't want to be looking at myself on the, the mobile. What I'm going to do is I'm going to power these two up and record some daylight footage. Ah, the distant, see over my head? On the horizon over there, there are five distant wind turbines. So that's a good test of zoom. I'm in front of a harvested but not ploughed field. So hopefully a few rabbits might agree to turn up just for your uh, delectation. Uh, there might be one or two birds around, but basically this is daylight footage. My plan is to come out again tonight, a bit further down the coast. Sam and I will go, she'll do some beach combing and I'll get some dusk footage with the Alpex as the light falls and then hopefully some rabbits will appear and that'll hopefully let the Alpex pick up some of the rabbits, get some eye shine and show it off and all the while I'm going to record in on the pad, WS LRF in shorter bursts but basically just to see how the pad and the Alpex compare because the Alpex is slightly cheaper than the pad the Alpex is about 800 I believe and the pads are 900, 899 from Sportsman Gun Centre but the pad has built-in laser rangefinder and a ballistic calculator and as you can see here it's significantly smaller than the Alpex and it's also significantly lighter. I was a little bit surprised yesterday when I saw that the Alpex when I unboxed it and I filmed a brief unboxing video. I was very surprised when I realized it was 1.3 kilos. I'm hopefully gonna fit it on a, a very light rifle that I'm also reviewing right now. So uh, yeah, hopefully uh, the two together will be manageable. So before it starts raining, I'm gonna get recording. And for those eager eyes among you, you'll have noticed that my Par WS LRF is mounted on the Eagle Vision cam mount. And I've got the customhunting.com adjustable iris. But I've also got an unsightly piece of uh, white electrical tape here because uh, during night use I'm concentrating on not falling over and targeting my prey and so on. I don't want to be concentrating on not accidentally moving this um, iris adjustment lever and reducing the, the available light at night. Oh, and in addition to the Eagle Vision cam mount, to raise the Alpex up slightly, I've got a pair of two-piece low Picatinny to Picatinny razor mounts just to raise the Alpex up enough that I could tighten the quick release mounts that Bruce kindly supplied when he uh, lent me this scope. And I've obviously got a coaster on here because the focus is very stiff on the Alpex. So it's a little bit too stiff, so you, you really need a coaster on it because there's, there's not a lot of grip on, uh, on this uh, ridged focus ring. Okay. The Alpex has a couple of inches of eye relief, which is like a normal day scope would. Whereas the pad, I have to get my eye 
right in till my eyebrow is touching the top of the rubber folded back cup to get the same image but with the pad on base mag of 6.5 and the Alpex zoomed in to times two digital mag and I'll put the resultant magnification on the screen here they are roughly matched recording first of all on the pad double AS LRF let's get the focus right so there we have wind turbines about 15 miles away I believe something like that there's five in total certainly not going to be able to range find them from here much closer we have there that's the point at which I'm ranging that grass I am surprised that the LRF aiming box is in the center of the screen though okay so you've got some foliage trees and bales green grass I need to find some green as well there we go okay that's a base mag 6.5 times zoom and that's zoomed so that's 13 times mag just so you can see the clarity okay I'll now look at the same items with the Alpex and I'll do the same zoom experiment I'm just looking at the same items I was just looking at with the pad and particularly distant wind turbines for a bit of distant object and the left hand wheel on the saddle times two zoom times four zoom and that's that's your lot let's see if we can sharpen that focus slightly a fair bit of hay, but that's one of five turbines. Let's zoom back out. Back to one time, so we've got one, two, and four times zoom. And back to that item, that pole. So one, two times zoom, and four times zoom. Pick up some foliage over there. Sorry, the image isn't quite level. Some more fields and cliffs in the distance. Uh, just to compare the green of that grass. Make sure I do the same items. Oh, and there is a crow out here. And the crow has moved a little bit. So I'll let you decide which image you prefer. But the pad is not gonna be anything like as good in low light mode as the Alpex. That's the Alpex's forte. Slightly closer than the distant turbine, so a little bit of anti-clockwise focus. So there we go, that's base mag. And out of interest, I'll just switch the pad back on. So the pad is automatically recording and it's pointing dead at the, dead at the crow actually. So the pad's base mag is 6.5. There we go, zoomed in, zoomed out. And the range to the crow is about 100 and about 120 yards apparently um, I'm not sure why the pad has reset and gone into yards mode but I'll need to set it back up again and I should also mention these are fairly low profile rubber buttons the rear button that does single image capture or video recording tiny microphone there and the mode button rear right to swap between day and night mode and then we've got the on off switch and i've seen on a few forums for example the hike micro group on facebook a few people have gone to press record and 
they've accidentally switched the scope off instead and some people have done that many many times i've not actually done that once yet all i do is slide my finger forward until it, i feel the stickiness of the rubber and then go to record with that button or go to change the modes with this button but if in doubt my own preference is to leave, leave the scope recording not mi risk missing anything and then pick up the pieces while editing does mean your editing takes a lot longer but i prefer it to risking switching off the scope and missing any shots so another trick as you can see here is to wrap a slim tie wrap carefully around the rear controls in between the rear pair of buttons and the front power button just so when you slide your finger forward you don't go past the controls and onto the power switch by accident a couple of these lights are just coming on just after sunset and start of dusk i did scatter several rabbits when i got here and uh, i just scanned around to the right with my mobile behind the nearest uh, static and uh, there's a few bunnies keeping a wary eye on me already <laughs> We simultaneously started recording on the PAN WAS LRF and on the Height Micro Alpex and the view between the through the, the two is quite different already. Oh they are pointing at virtually the same thing. Okay, that's interesting. The the view through the Alpex is crystal clear, quite a vivid green despite the fact that the sun has now set in the distance oh and the sunset there we go the sunset is way over here I'm looking south and the sunset is off to the right there were a couple of rabbits just ahead here a little while ago the pard adjustable iris is fully open but the pard is looking quite gloomy the Alpex is looking very vivid. A couple of these lights are just coming on just after sunset and start of dusk. Now there is a sodium street light above my head. Here is to show the difference between the pod and the Alpex. The pod is still green grass, but it's very grainy. Beside me has just gone out. Wonder if it's a motion sensor. The rabbit I'm looking at with the Alpex right now is only 20 odd meters away. I can no longer see it with the naked eye. The Alpex sees it fine. You see the eye, perfect headshot there. Just wasn't on a tripod. And no need for night vision. Whereas the pod, oh right, the pod can only see where the lights are. So the pod basically now has to go into night vision mode. Pads IR on one. Six, seven rabbits. With that one, we we'll pop the Alpex onto night vision mode. Now, interesting, the pad's night IR is almost too much for 25 meters. Two, three. 
Zoom is the path, two times, fine tune the focus. As you can see, the Alpex is good with the pads IR on, PCSA IR on one, the Alpex is good to a few hundred meters. back on spread, diffuse beam, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, so much better the Alpex image to the pad image, and this is the pads, the VCSEL IR on 1, and the beam spread Too much to zoom wise. One drawback is, like most scopes, like the pads and so on, the Height Micro Alpex A50T won't record and let you go through the menu at the same time. So you can't go through the menu while recording. Just to show you, if I, a quick press of the capture button gets you a JPEG, a longer press top left corner starts recording the long press stops it and i have screwed the uh, ibels diopter ring right in to get this in focus for the video camera here a press of the left turret gets you into the menu and i've noticed with this scope that unlike other height micros i've used one press gets you into the uh, menu and then turning the left turret anti-clockwise scrolls you up through the menu version for example and then you press the button in and you get the information you're after so that's the current firmware on this scope press again anti-clockwise again restore restores everything auto power off press in and rather than go through certain options you just press in multiple times so you've gone from 30 to 45 minutes to off to 30 45 minutes so you've got two choices of the auto power off another anti-clockwise time sync so that's you can set your time and date press that in and here you go 24 hours or 12 hour clock anti-clockwise brand logo you can basically have the height micro logo visible on the recordings or not language and you've got a fair old scroll there and the press on screen display press in and you can have the time or the date or both anti-clockwise audio on so that's audio recordings and as you've probably seen from a few other videos the microphone on this uh, Alpex scope is very very sensitive so it's very prone to recording wind noise even more so than for example my mobile phone and a few other in this video camera so be aware of that pre-record on or off and that's so that when you have it set up it, the scope will detect the recoil of a shot and can save the 10 or 15 seconds before each shot as pre-recorded info reticle i'll be, come back to that in a second reticle group so press in i've got it set oh i forgot i'd done this so a b c d e and as i understand it that's like reticle profiles Oh, and while we're on this reticle, if I just get rid of the menu for a second and zoom, you can see top right, I've gone to two times zoom. And if I go back out, you'll notice that the reticle auto centered as well as being, and this is clearly a first focal plane reticle as well. That's up to four times. Okay. Back to the menu, anti-clockwise again, unit, meters or yards. 
measure or well, that's stadiometric range finding which uh, I've, I've never used and Bruce and I don't really rate that I don't think many people use that day or night that's so you can set it for the default mode of whatever it's in when you switch it on but as you can see a long press of the button on the eye bell or the rear right uh, will switch it between day and night mode anyway pip press in the jog dial button and you get an option of pip top center on or off contrast brightness and network and that's if you want to set the um just the wi-fi on for running running it with an app and back to the start for version so if i go back through to the reticle so reticle we go in here and we have again it's pressing the jog dial button it takes you through reticles one two three four five and off a clockwise turn of the jog dial distance so you can save each of the five zero profiles at you can have one set for say 30 minute 30 meters for example with me that would be 177 non-fac you could set another one you could have it not only labeled number two you could have it two 50 meters and that would be me for me that would be 22 fac zero it's a way, a way of helping to identify each of your five uh, zero profiles scroll in again reticle type and we're on four right now so five back to one two three four and back to five and i believe that reticle four i believe that's the only first focal one just let me check that yep i went to this particular reticle on screen i went to use a zoom and although it auto centered when i zoomed into two times the actual visible reticle design on screen didn't change so only reticle four is first focal plane back to reticle okay so we have our reticle reticle id one to five whatever distance you've uh, tagged it with as a, a memoir uh, you've got your five reticle types color so red green white blue red oh it was orange and white ah right we seem to have an, a bold white and a thin white okay and zoom okay so that's for um zooming while you're zeroing so it's going from one to two to four and back to one so we'll go to two for example turn the dial and you can select when to freeze it when you're happy hit the freeze and you go into this sub menu and again within the sub menu it's frozen and you can still change the zoom between one times two times and four times which of course is th times 3.5 times 7 or times 14 in actual magnification terms and while you're in this sub menu you can always adjust by freezing or unfreezing and then you go down to the x and y and that allows you to physically change your zero values so while i'm here I'll just dial this back to zero because you can see it's going in increments of 0.5. Okay. Save parameters. Okay. Okay. So that's the Hype Micro Alpex A50T. That's a rundown of the menu. Hope that was interesting for those uh, interested in this rather wonderful scope, which amazing sensitivity. So coming up in part three, which will be a fair bit shorter. I was out a few days ago basically using the uh, Alpex A50T for a couple of hours of pest control in the barn on rats at uh, sort of 40, 35 to 40 meters. There'll be some uh, thermal spotter footage spliced in from the Griffin GH35L as well, including range finding. I hope to get that to you in a few days. Thanks for watching. Cheers. <laughs>